out in 1984 in an interview. Yeah. You have to see it. Paul Harvey, you know who that is? Sure. So he did a thing, God, back in the 60s or 70s, and he equated it to the devil. Um, and maybe it is. Or you could also say it's 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 just that. But he did a radio piece on on how to destroy America, the social fabric of it. Wow. And it's, and it's as though somebody just took... Uh, America, the, the social fabric of America from the late 60s to today and and the timeline of the things that he said. It's pretty wicked. It's pretty powerful. Wow. If you hear, <laughs> play, play a little of that Yuri Bezmanov. I know we played it many times, but you need to hear it because it's so wild to watch him say it. You watch him say it in 1984 and well, back then. Well, you pull up the Paul Harvey thing from whenever that was about the devil. Maybe let's play that. Pull that up because we, I've, I haven't heard that. And I've heard the Bezbanoff thing. We played it like five times at least. It'll blow your mind when you hear this. It's um, it's not good, but it also gives us a chance to right the ship. It hasn't fucking hit the rocks yet. Like we can still come out of this. Paul Harvey. If I... Were the devil. Is this the thing? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. If I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness, and I'd have a third of its real estate and four fifths of its population. But I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, the. So I'd set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. Do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. Wow. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions. Just let those run wild. Wow. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Holy shit. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing. I'd have judges promoting <laughs> pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what'll you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. What year was that? It was 65, but... Holy shit. 1965. That's amazing. 65. Wow. April 3rd, 1965. Paul Harvey nailed it. Yeah. Wow. So you can you can use devil as a euphemism for anything that you want. Yeah. But the, but the results the same and we're seeing it we're, we're seeing that you know I think they said what somebody said that all these things are bad work ethic all these things are racist yeah. or whatever it's, it's mostly Yeah, toxic masculinity. Oh yeah, I've been <laughs> I've been accused of that. Congratulations. 
You're on the right side. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fascinating one. Yeah. Defund the police. Toxic masculinity. Yeah, that they, worked that worked great. Yeah. They're all in the same sort of category yeah. of things. Like that seems silly. Seems silly to think that way. You need all of it. You need masculinity and femininity. It's okay. Just be whatever you are, but you, you you fucking need it. Yeah. And if you want to tell those dudes that are playing football that uh they're they're toxic masculine, who what else are you gonna get? Who who's gonna play football other than like super aggressive alpha males? What are you talking about? But why is that's that not toxic? That's not toxic. No, it's just natural masculine behavior. Yeah. It's not toxic. What about toxic? It's all it's all stupid. That term as applied. It's like But these are all terms that have been created. There's, it's fascinating that language is being reinvented before our eyes. Yeah. There's all these new words that are just meant to keep one person from disagreeing with another person's position. Mm -hmm. I love microaggressions. That's oh, that's a great one. Just like little bitty, oh, you weren't, that was a microaggression. Yeah, and you can call people out on it. I called them out on this microaggression. Like, what? I, I, I don't <sighs> think I've ever been guilty. I don't think anyone's ever been curious about my, you know, if I if I if I'm upset at you, you're gonna fucking know it. Yeah, that's how it should be. Yeah, 